Welcome back to City Line. Joining us now to talk about the People's Gathering is Melanie Denise Cunningham, founder and visionary of the People's Gathering. Welcome, Melanie. Hey, thanks, Jeff. So happy to be here with you today. Also joining us is Cherry Steinwender, Executive Director of the Center for Healing Racism. Welcome, Cherry. It is my pleasure, Jeff. I've been looking forward to this for the last two weeks, and it's very nice meeting you. And I wanna give a shout out to all of your audience. So first of all, Melanie, as the founder and visionary of the People's Gathering at PLU, what does it mean to you having convening, convened this dialogue in the community 10 times, and what are the takeaways? I got this vision. I was able to um, bring the players together and we've been tackling some really meaningful topics over the last 10 years. And it was only recently that I realized, I mean, our 10 convenings, that I realized this is the 10th time. So what it means is it's sustaining itself, that people are finding value in these conversations. And for uh, many folks, and, and last convening in November, we had over 500 people uh, show up online. And so for many of them, this is their first time, but for many of them, they've been to all 10. And so it, it just warms my heart that people are finding meaning in this work and they're showing up from all walks of our community, the nonprofit sector, the government sector, um, the faith-based sector, the higher ed, when you look at that attendee list, it's like, mm -hmm. we're bringing them together and we're, we're getting a common understanding of uh, what and how we need to do to talk about race and with Cherry coming on to heal racism. Mm -hmm. Now, just to clarify a little bit, when we talk about 10 convenings, is that 10 years or is it over 15 years with 10 convenings or clarify that please. yeah oh thanks for that clarification it's over a span since 2017 oh. and so we were doing we were doing in-person convenings at first and then uh of course everyone knows the pandemic showed up rona came around <laughs> and um so we went to virtual and we called an emergency convening um, when uh, George Floyd's murder was thrust into um, our consciousness. People were just grappling. I mean, I, I don't know why they didn't know before with, uh, you know, say your name, Sandra Bland, say your name, ta ta his name, ta Tammy Rice, um, Trayvon Martin. I don't know why people didn't know it before, but George Floyd struck a chord. And so we called an emergency convening and people just needed the space to breathe. And so from there, we went from instead of once a year, we went to twice a year. So you find us in November. Um, I'm sorry, and I'm talking academic year because I we are with Pacific Lutheran University. So you find us in the fall, in November, and then you find us in the spring uh, in March. Nice. So why is healing racism the center of conversation for this 10th convening? It's necessary. I mean, it is necessary. We can talk all we want to, and what is what we see uh, when folks come, and then especially what they say afterwards, what do I do? I don't know what to do, I'm stuck. What do I do? And you know, just to be frank, it's mostly stuck white people, right? Mostly, they're stuck. Good hearts, good minds, good souls, stuck. And so I'm ready. Our planning committee is ready to just move right into, let's talk about what we do to heal ourselves, because once we are healed, we acknowledge we're healed, and then we can show up and um, do the work. And healing is a process. And so that's why once I was aware of Cherry's work and the fantastic work of the Center for Healing Racism, it's like, let's, let's get to this. And so I'm so excited that, uh, Cherry and her crew is coming, uh, will bring their energy, knowledge, wisdom, spirit into our uh, gathering consciousness. Well, speaking of Cherry, um, tell us about back in the day, Cherry, when you created the Center for Healing Racism, 
what was the racial climate like then and how do you see the racial climate now and the relevancy of your work? Well, we began all of this in 1989 and we are just about in our 33rd year. And of was a lot of people, myself included. We spent a lot of energy looking at a lot of things that's totally superficial, whether it's hair, whether it's clothing, for a lot of people have a lot of, you know, energy around shoes, going to restaurants, but to be totally quiet and to really take a good look at what's going on around you. And this is what happened to us in 1989. We stopped long enough to realize, and I remember the question very well, Cherry, have you noticed they're talking about racism a lot in the media? And really that was a surprise to me because I hadn't stopped long enough. Just the fact of putting that question in my mind caused me to stop and really take a good look. I remember even during that time, Spike Lee's movie came out, Do the Right Thing, and then start looking at and reading different publications having to do with racism. And we decided that, you know, it's time that we really stop long enough to have the conversation and the people that we had the conversation with, we were all very good friends. And for your audience to see them, we were third generation, Japanese American, Latin American, African American, European American. And we did a lot of things together. But you know how you go out to eat, or you're, maybe you're riding a bicycle, but let's stick with eating. And somebody will say, oh, gee whiz, didn't you hear what happened on TV the other night? And so and so and so, and it was a racial incident. And of course, you don't have that coffee. You don't want to have that conversation. And it's so easy to say, oh, uh, why don't you pass the sugar, please? Oh. Oh, pass anything, the elephant, as long as we don't talk about the elephant. But we made a decision that we are really going to talk about it. And what we found is the reason we named our organization Center for Healing Racism, because we started meeting regularly at each other's house, this core group of people, it was about 10 of us, having these conversations. And we realized that we've all been hurt. We've all been, have been damaged around racism. And I have to say it the way it is. It really doesn't matter how white your skin is or shades of brown. But for many white people, they've never even given it one thought that they have been hurt by racism. But sitting in the circle with thousands of people over these last 33 years, I have heard and I've seen the damage, regardless of what your physical appearance looked like. It was also very interesting, probably around 1991, the Lutheran church, and I don't know if it was a you know, local one or on a national level, but they had little children draw and write a pamphlet and it was all words and everything else having to do with racism. Mm -hmm. And with that said, even now I have been working with the Lutheran church, even during the time of the pandemic and all of it is around racism. So if I look at racism in 1989, it was beginning to resurface. And now it's blown wide open again. And it really, we are living in a space and time right now in this country that I never thought we would ever revisit the rise of hate crimes, mm -hmm. the, the rise of all of these different hate groups. I never, I thought that was past. And so now this conversation is still more needed than ever and more people is willing to really look at it due to George Floyd's murder. And um, Jeff, if I, if I could, um, the People's Gathering is a professional development conference. And so it's necessary for us to have these conversations 
uh, about how things go on in the workplace, right? Uh, so it's 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 focused on personal development and professional development, but it's how you show up in the workplace because there's a lot of um, egregious acts that are happening these days, uh, not only outside in our community, but at work. And so this is necessary for us to do it like this. Yeah. And I really love the, you know, just taking a look at the work that we have been able to, to do for 33 years. That's a long time. Many organizations have not last 33 years and people are still coming up. And our mission statement is to educate people because there isn't enough education going on. And in so many schools, it won't be any now around racism because of the different laws that's been passed from state to state. Mm -hmm. So our job is to educate. If you start telling people the real truth of what would really happen in order to empower them to make a difference, in order to for them to start their own healing, the way that the center work, it's a hard thing. It's a love thing. I don't think that anything that we've ever done was done without love as one of the main ingredients. To be able to really love people into their healing. We never ever call anyone a terrible name. In fact, we never ever have called anyone a racist because I understand according to one of the university professors, for a white person to be called a racist is a fierce second to death. So how can we have in our name healing for the traumatized people and call them a racist? We learn from each other through listening. We do not allow people to cross talk. And the way we've been able to have the conversation to keep it safe enough where people can hear and they do hear. I am still getting people coming back. In fact, just yesterday, someone was in the office and she started with the center in 1991. So we have a long history and we have traveled to 45 states already in two countries. And we have worked with people all over the world as they enter the United States through the State Department, wanting to understand about racism. Great. So the People's Gathering, a Revolution of Consciousness Conference is on March 24th from 8.30 yes. to 3.30. Um, what, what can participants expect to gain from that experience? Well, they're, they're going to, um, and I, if you don't mind, Cherry, I'll take this, is that uh, the Center for Healing Racism is going to facilitate the morning uh, session, and they're going to uh, put us into small groups. They have their curriculum, small groups. And we're gonna actually learn, I mean, like go through the process of how to have these conversations. The People's Gathering, a revolution of consciousness is teaching people how to talk about it. And I wanna be super clear, this is for people at all levels, the, the beginner, the advanced, the intermediate, in your anti-racist journey is for everyone. Sometimes what happens is the people that are more advanced, they get um, frustrated with the people in, in the beginning that are beginners and they're telling me, Melanie, we wanna have a more advanced level. And I'm saying, no, you come and be with your people. So community wise, community wide that we're helping each other. Cause in the afternoon we have our affinity groups, uh, we call them race dialogues. And so based on the box that you check on the census form, and that's a whole nother conversation cause that's when the government forces us into the race conversation. And then they don't want us to talk about it for 10 more years. But <laughs> so the box that you check on the census form, there's a dialogue room for you that will be able then to carry the conversation from the morning and then process it from how you show up in the world as quote, a white person or a Latinx person or um, a, a multiracial person, which most of the time the multiracial folks say to us, thank you, we don't have to choose. We can be ourselves. So it's what can people expect? They can expect a supportive space 
to speak on, as Cherry said, the elephant in the room and how do they apply it specifically to work and home. So, so supportive space and very deep dialogue. I hope that makes sense. Uh, this The whole consciousness talk is, I mean, it, it's, it just brings your brain to a point where you realize you have to make adjustments to understand what's going on. And, and, and to your point, Cherry, the, to get to a point where you can make a difference and, and, you know, be part of this conversation in a positive yeah. way. And, and the final point, Jeff, so Cherry talked about love. Love is at the center of liberation, right? And we, have been socialized into this racist system with fear and ignorance in the middle. And so with, with, with the work of the Center for Healing Racism, which by the way is based in Houston, Texas, for, the, um, for their work, they're teaching us how to lead with love. They're showing us how to lead with love on this very difficult topic that most people fear. Very nice. Well, we've run out of time, but uh, it's been just a pleasure uh, talking with both of you. Um, National Women's Day was this week, and I am so privileged to have met both of you in this conversation and feel honored to uh, have been able to host this segment. Thanks again. And we'll be back with Tacoma Little Theater on City Line in just a moment. Stay tuned.